everybody. This is Michelle coming at you with five weeks left until surgery. Eek! And yay! But mostly eek! Um, I'm going to try to look over here because it seems like I'm always looking over there when I talk and I can't for the life of me figure out why that is except the camera's over here. So we're going to look over here where you are. Anyway, um, so I have some things to talk about. I even took notes, so we won't be rambling. Oh man, you can't see that at all. Uh, anyway, so first things first, um, not this last Sunday, but the Sunday before I went to see Impractical Jokers in San Diego, which is about two hours from where I live. And um, it was a fabulous time. Oh my gosh, we had such a great time. We got there super early and we were able to go to this little funky bar and... <clears throat> They had a giant Jenga that we played, and um, and uh, it was it was just really a neat experience. And then we saw the show, and it was just the super coolest thing because everybody was laughing so hard. It was like, you know how like if you see a play or whatever, and there's something funny, and you go ha 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 ha, and but it's sort of measured. Well, this was. <clears throat> It got to a point where the whole room was laughing together and we were laughing so hard that it was almost like being in a choir where you couldn't distinguish your own laugh from everybody else's. It was like laughing as a single body. It was amazing. Um, and and I was just, just belly laughing. It was so great. And uh, I, I really, the Joker is very good to their fans. And so anyway, if you ever have the opportunity to see, to see the Impractical Jokers on TV, they're on True TV, or on uh, actually a live show, I highly recommend it. That was one of the that was the funniest thing I have ever seen. Um, so anyway, but uh, but in I'm going to tie that to weight loss surgery. Uh, going down there, we were in my friend's fiance's truck, and I was sitting in the back seat, and the seat belt didn't fit. And I don't know if you guys have ever had problems with that where. Um, the front seat belt fits in the front seat, but the back seat seat belt doesn't fit. I've actually run into that a couple of times. And, uh, in my sister's car, I was able to like, like, you know, put it like kind of under my belly and around and like scoot, scoot down like that. And I could get it to fit. But in this truck, it just wasn't having it. So, um, I had to, and I was too embarrassed to say anything. So I rode all the way down there and all the way back with like my arm through it my arm through it to kind of hold it down and to look like I was wearing it and I was so nervous that somebody was going to catch me and I'm not I mean, it's my best friend you know like she but still in front of her fiance uh, so that was kind of an icky thing and, and it made me realize that I won't have to worry about that in the future so that was a you know bad thing that led to a happy thought um, and you know I'd love to hear from you if you guys have done that or if I'm the only weirdo that seatbelt didn't fit, so I just held it down the whole time. Like, that's going to protect me from an accident instead of breaking my arm and every other thing. Anyway, okay, next up is I was reading this uh, Compulsive Eater's Handbook, or workbook, yesterday that my uh, healthcare provider recommends, and she talked about some interesting measurements other than BMI, and one of them was a waist-to-hip ratio, which I'd never heard of, and I went online and, and did it because I know my waist and hip measurements off the top of my head. And um, it turns out that I'm not an apple shape and I'm not a pear shape. I am an avocado shape. So there. And an avocado shape is basically you're fat all over. <laughs> and I've been told before that I carry my weight evenly all over, which is a good thing because you tend to be able to carry more weight and people don't uh, think you're as heavy as you are, but it's also a bad thing because you tend to carry more weight and people don't think you're as heavy as you are and until it's like really bad. So um, I was like, and I was thinking, well, I don't mind carrying my weight all over. If only I just didn't carry so much on my face. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm going to stop harping on that, I swear. Uh, so that was interesting. So if you want to look up your waist to hip ratio, just um, spark people has a really good uh, discussion of that and a really good calculator where they tell you um, what your waist to hip ratio is and stuff. So I recommend that just for kicks, you know, shits and giggles and 
Uh, then I used a different website to, t to explain to me what the different body types meant, and it kind of read like a like a horoscope a little bit, like, you know, you will have these health risks. Because I guess apple-shaped means you have the most health risks for um, cardiovascular issues and other things, and pear shape is the least risk, and avocado shape is sort of in between. So, anyway, I had fun with that yesterday. Um, I'm still having stress dreams big time about, and I think it's surgery related because I really don't have anything else to be stressed about. So, you know, I guess that's just going to continue until surgery or maybe a little after surgery. So I'll just have to deal with it. Um, and you know, I don't really know what else to say about that, except that it just, ugh, it just keeps going. And I, maybe I'm lucky that my body cho chooses to let it go a little bit at a time so that, um, I'm, I don't, it doesn't come out in like one big panic attack or something. So way to see the bright side, Michelle. Um, I was also thinking about how, you know, there's this statement and I'm sure you've all have heard it, that depression is anger turned inward. And I've been thinking more and more about how true that really is because I have a lot of anger from stuff that's happened to me in the past and yeah, it's really heinous stuff and I'm really bad at expressing anger really really bad and so since I have all this anger built up and it was only recently that I even acknowledged that I have anger that's how bad I am at expressing it and I think that the depression that I've experienced is that because it, it's it's like you have all this anger and you don't know what to do with it and you're like you know a nice girl so you don't want to go around yelling at everybody in any way they don't deserve it um and so you turn it inward because there's nothing else to do with it and then that makes you sad because it like eats you from the inside and also um you know I've been eating my anger um when I feel uncomfortable feelings I eat and it soothes me so, um, I feel like if I can find a way to get, get rid of this anger, to release it, um, then that will really seriously help with the depression and the, um, and anxiety and, uh, food issues. Unfortunately, I still don't know what to do with it. Maybe you guys can, can, can answer that for me or give me some tips or whatever, because it's like, I've never had a therapist that really knew like would really give me some good advice on that. Um, mainly you get like, well, journal it. And it's like, mm. you know, and especially for me because I'm a writer and I write down every freaking thing. And, um, you know, I was writing about it yesterday and I guess I feel a little bit better today, but it wasn't really, I don't know. It wasn't, I guess uh, part of it is that writing it down even makes me feel uncomfortable, but um, it still doesn't quite get the the whole thing, you know, and it's like, you know, I want to like cast evil spells on these people or like there's a, there's really a part of me that wants like, like a really concrete revenge or something. Um, and I know revenge isn't the way to go and all that, but, uh, but you know, there's a, there's that part of me that is so angry. I want to sink my teeth into something. And I feel like I don't have an outlet where I can let it out enough you know, like I would rather have one giant burst and get it over with and then to go a little, little bit at a time. But that's just me being impatient, maybe. Um, so that's something that I'm working on. Uh, you know, and maybe if I write about it more and more and more, jeez, my whole life, writing, 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 um, that'll help some. But we'll see. We'll see. Let's see what else we've got here. You know, this is the last thing. Let's see how we're doing on time. Eek! Oh gosh, we're doing great on time. Um, I say eek a lot. Eek! Anyway, I went, this last Sunday, I went bowling with a couple of friends. It was sort of an impromptu thing. And I bowled great for the first three frames, but the whole, but the whole rest of that game and the two that followed, I bowled like crap. And uh, that was because I started thinking about it. When I first went up there, I was like, oh, I'm going to suck. And I, and I just caught three spares in a row. And then I started thinking, well, like, maybe I could be good at this and let me start aiming the ball. And then it went to, went to shit. So, um, don't do that. You know, when you bowl, don't bowl and think. You can bowl and drink, but don't bowl and think. Um, anyway, and then we went to Farrell's, this restaurant Farrell's afterwards, which is really fun and loud and they sing to you and everything. Um, and 
um, we took a picture, I took a picture of my friends and cause I didn't want to be anywhere near the camera and it dawned on me like, it'll be so freeing. It'll be such an NSV when I feel like I'm thin enough that I am not camera shy anymore, that I actually don't mind having my picture taken. And I see that a lot on Instagram where people are excited that they like the camera now and that they like seeing themselves on camera and they like seeing what they look like and it's no big deal. It's like, they like when you're out with your friends, hey, let's take a picture of us all. And it's not like you have that sinking feeling like, oh shit, I'm gonna look like hell and somebody's gonna tag me on Facebook and then everybody's gonna see it when I worked so hard at uh, maintaining the illusion that I'm not fat. Um, at least that's the way it is for me. I don't know about you guys. And you know, I've taken all the, the camera angles. You're doing this. Even so severe as like that, that, there you go. Um, when you've done all that work to maintain that illusion and then somebody tags you in a photo and like that happened to me when I graduated from college, my friend's mother posted this God awful picture of me and tagged me. It was so bad. I was like, it was so bad. It was so bad. So anyway, how cool will it be to have events and, and, uh, functions and stuff and not worry about having your picture taken. So I'm excited for that. That's going to be a great NSV. And that's all I have for today, kids. Um, I am looking forward to surgery and as always I'm looking forward to seeing all your videos. Thank you for watching and subscribing and liking and if you haven't liked and subscribed you can do that right now. And um, anyway so I will talk at you later. Bye bye!